On top of the fact we had the heavy rainfall from Claudette Friday and into Saturday, especially out into Slidell. Right now, though, the considerable flash flood warning is just for the South Shore. That is only for the South Shore. But as we look up on the North Shore, and I'm going to kind of zoom in because I don't want to ignore especially the Slidell area that had the um, just torrential flooding from uh, from Saturday morning. I don't want to forget about uh, showing what the, the rainfall is doing there now. And again, if this uh, kind of cluster of very heavy rain from uh, Kenner to Metairie around the metro area holds together and continues along that same trajectory, it's going to put that right over Slide L. Some of the rainfall estimates, radar rate estimates that we're getting from the National Weather Service have been almost six and a half to near seven inches around the slide L or excuse me, excuse me, I apologize. 6.7 rainfall rate in Avondale in St. Charles. So right around the St. Charles Jefferson Parish line, they did at one point re measure and rainfall rate of almost seven inches per hour. So even if this is moving at a pretty decent clip, you're probably going to see half of that amount in a very short period of time. In less than an hour, you'll probably pick up about three to four inches of rainfall. I don't care how good the pumping system is or how much drainage you have, that is going to lead to flooding. And we may see more widespread flooding across the metro area in the coming 30 minutes or so as this very, very heavy rain is moving over Metro New Orleans right now. Some of the other rainfall rates that we have been seeing kind of on average have been at around three to four, but they're have been isolated amounts of even higher rainfall rates. That's where you're going to get some fairly significant, not just nuisance flooding, but more significant flooding as this is all moving back over the city. Now, if there again is any positive one, it is moving and two, there are and have been several breaks in that rain. Let me put this into motion to show you where the rain is now over the metro area and what is to come. Thankfully, nothing else is to come. This new batch is moving over the city right now. Farther southwest, it's kind of a light to moderate rain and satellite not showing anything further developing. So it does look like once we get this batch that's moving over us right now to clear out, we should see settled weather for the rest of the evening and going into tonight. Night. However, this is going to continue along the path up towards Slidell. Now, thankfully, we had that first little heavy batch. It wasn't nearly as bad as it was earlier in the metro area that already moved through Slidell. Notice it's actually kind of intensified as it moves away from Picayune and to now more northeastern Hancock County. But the rain that is moving over the city at the moment is going to continue along a trajectory. Now, I can't say for certain that it's going to still be in that uh, almost five to six inch inches per hour rainfall rate as it approaches Slidell, but certainly more excessive rain in areas that do not need to see any heavy rainfall. So even if those rainfall rates come down, what's over the city now, it is still going to lead to flooding in parts of southeastern St. Tammany Parish from Lacombe to Slidell. Purlington may continue on into parts of western Hancock County if it's able to hold together that long moving along that same path. So the heavy rainfall over the city at the moment is producing some rainfall rates of kind of instantaneous, they're calling it, of about four to five inches per hour. That's what's over the metro area right now. Those heavy downpours, we already had this first batch of very heavy rain move over the city. The next even more intense rain is moving over the metro area at the moment. Thankfully, though, as I mentioned, it doesn't appear as though that there is anything farther to the south and west of this. And we can actually show you on satellite to get an idea of what we're looking at, because when we colorize satellite, you see where those brighter cloud tops are and where the more intense storms are. And we have had this kind of complex of storms well down into the southern Gulf, well, I say southern Gulf of Mexico, south of us in the Gulf of Mexico. That complex of storms is weakening. Notice those intense cloud tops. I tell you what, this complex is more impressive than Claudette was when it was in the Gulf of Mexico. And boy, you saw the lightning just I mean, firing off right around that center. That is starting to weaken, so that is some good news. This is no longer really going to send that uh, any threat of any heavy rainfall through the rest of this evening. May still be there tomorrow, may get another round into tomorrow morning and through the day tomorrow. So unfortunately, we're not done with the rainfall, but we should be getting a bit more of a break through the rest of this evening and into tonight, at least in terms of the more intense rain. But as I mentioned, you look at the brighter cloud tops, that's what's moving over the city right now. And as you look far to 
compared to the south and west, notice there is no additional development. So hopefully, as this one moves out, we should have a bit more of a break through the rest of the evening and into tonight. But that doesn't mean we're done with it yet because that heavy rainfall is right now moving over the city and rainfall rates instantaneous of about four to five inches. So that means you can easily pick up in probably less than an hour about four to five inches of rainfall. And that is why the National Weather Service tag date considerable on the flash flood warning, which is what sent everyone's cell phone. If you're within this polygon area under a notification of potentially uh, dangerous flooding where four to five inches of rainfall is going to create flooding on roadways in a short period of time where there may may not be any standing water. So I normally don't hype up the weather by any means, but this is a more serious situation with very heavy rainfall across most of our population in southeast Louisiana is in these portions of St. Charles, Jefferson and Orleans Parish. So most of our population right now getting inundated with very, very heavy rainfall. As I mentioned, instantaneous rainfall rates of about four to five inches uh, per hour. So the flash flooding threat will continue into the early evening. Thankfully, though, it does look like a lot of this will be winding down as we continue through the next couple of hours. And as I mentioned, I'm not totally on board with all of our computer models because usually these type of complexes are a little bit more difficult to forecast the intricacies of. So we're looking as though we're going to settle down for the rest of the evening. Probably going to still have some light showers, moderate showers through the rest of the evening and overnight and may see more development de uh, come tomorrow morning and at times during the day tomorrow into the afternoon and evening. What's going on is overall there is this uh, kind of upper boundary that is sitting over the area, not a tropical system, but an upper disturbance, which is helping to get in a very moist atmosphere. These heavy showers and thunderstorms developing still going to be with us tomorrow and then finally starting to wind down as we get toward the middle to end of next week and then we will start to dry out. But again, this is just in a normal circumstance with having a, a, a dry stretch of weather, this would cause some significant flooding. But you couple that with the fact that we've already had that heavy rainfall from Claudette. Now, it wasn't nearly as uh, extensive over the metro area as it was in Slidell late Friday and early Saturday. But certainly four to five inches of instantaneous heavy rainfall is going to cause some major issues across much of the metro area. We're looking at a peak rate of uh, let's see, this is actually from uh, Colin Arnold with the city, uh, 3.6 inch rainfall rate at the Carrollton water plant. Uh, so it looks like, again, these are isolated areas where we saw those high, almost six to seven inch rainfall rates over a widespread area. They've been averaging more like four to maybe at the most six inches per hour. That is still an incredible amount of moisture and or I should say of rainfall accumulation in a short period, but those high end totals of near seven inches per hour are far more isolated in nature. However, widespread four to five inch instantaneous, that's going to cause more widespread flooding issues as opposed to what is more of a common uh, isolated flooding threat. This is more of a widespread flooding threat, which is going to continue until this heavy rainfall moves on out. Now, as I mentioned, I'm always the one looking for that bright spot, that silver lining. It's moving and there does not appear to be any kind of further development of those more intense storms from the Dissalmans area toward Gray, Raceland and down toward the coast. So it does look like we're going to get a break, a long break, an end to the heavy rainfall once this does move out. Does look like some of the heavy, intense rain is starting to abate around the Destrehan area. Now, even with that said, we're not going to see the flash flood warning lifted until later on this evening because though the rainfall will be gone, the street flooding will likely be ongoing for the next several hours. It takes some time for drainage to kind of catch up. And so once this rain does move out, we will still be under that flash flood watch for the next several hours. And as I mentioned, if you're just joining us, National Weather Service placed a considerable tag. We did see the flash flood warning issued about an hour or so ago. I was on Facebook Live and on our website. We were discussing the first round of heavy rain that moved across the metro area and we were watching this second batch that was moving in our direction. Weather Service issued a flash flood warning and that was that. But once this started to intensify, what they were looking at were the rainfall rates with this 
complex of storms as well as the lightning. We always take a look at that lightning and all of a sudden really and you kind of watch the imagery here. Once it was just to the south of Destrehan, the lightning really started to intensify as did the intensity of those rainfall rates. So just to the south of Destrehan, the storm kind of exploded a bit and that's when the Weather Service placed that considerable tag on the flash flood warning and what that does is issued what's called the WIA system and that triggers the warning on your cell phone. So everybody's cell phone within this area was just activated that we had more of a flooding emergency across the area. Four to five inch rainfall rates of an instantaneous nature will lead to flooding. This isn't more of an isolated threat. This is now more widespread and widespread across probably the vast population of Southeast Louisiana from St. Charles, all of Northern Jefferson and a good part of Orleans Parish. Really the only exception is out in New Orleans East as far as Orleans Parish goes that is under this new flash flood warning with that considerable tag, meaning flooding is more of a danger as opposed to just a nuisance of high water on roadways. Flash flood warnings are issued and sometimes they seem almost too often because if there is water covering roads and weather service starts to get reports of several roadways covered or I should say inundated with water or covered with water and especially if we start getting reports of uh, the low-lying underpasses underwater a flash flood warning will be issued for most of us it's, it tends to be more of just a nuisance Cas can't cross streets can't cross certain intersections you have to uh, kind of avoid and detour and unless you're out and about on the road Roads, it isn't too too much of a problem when it becomes more of an emergency that's when the rainfall rates are now kind of exceed, exceeding even that of just on the roads and it has nowhere else to go so it starts rising and may start moving into homes businesses just beyond out on the roadways and in your car it becomes a little bit more of a danger to be out and about anywhere so as I mentioned for folks at work that may be watching us right now just hold tight for maybe another couple of hours and allow this one to pass and two for the pumps and drainage to kind of catch up and allow for that water to start dropping. So far, that is not going to be the case for probably another solid hour or more that we will begin to see improving roadways. Flash flood warning again, we're starting to see, let's see a report in Orleans Parish of six to 12 inches of flowing water over the roadways. I wish this actually said where it was coming from. Uh, let's see, I'm not getting a, I'm not getting a location, uh, but certainly parts of the city, uh, they are reporting about a half a foot to a foot of flowing water over the roads. That's about all you need to lift a car and begin moving it. So it does not take much flowing water to lift up a car and begin moving it. And it looks like there have been reports now of that occurring in the city. I, I apologize that we don't actually have specific of which roads uh, those are, but this is why you just hang where you are at the moment. If you don't have to get out of the, on the roadways, by any means stay inside for probably another couple of hours or so, maybe going into later tonight, allow these storms to pass through, allow drainage, allow the pumps to kind of take and do what they can to get rid of what is very intense rain moving over the city. Now, as I mentioned, you saw that kind of explosion in the intensity of the storm south of Destrehan, those bright reds and the intensity, the number of lightning strikes every couple of minutes just really blossomed south of Destrehan. This is when they issued that considerable flash flood warning over the city. Now, as we kind of look at the last few images here, it is still fairly intense, perhaps not quite as much lightning within these storms, but still very intense rainfall. Now again, the good news is it is moving. More good news, it looks like it's starting to kind of wrap up on the West Bank. So Hanville looks like we're finally starting to dry out a bit. Still some light to moderate rain. We have Mike McDaniel at the Marconi underpass. Okay, we are uh, talking about some of the areas uh, that are being flooded. Mike McDaniel is out at the Marconi underpass. Mike, what are you seeing out there right now? Where are you? 
Hey Chris, well the good news is the problems that we saw about an hour ago, that has subsided just a little bit when it comes to water flooding the underpass. We are getting blasted with that system right now. You can clearly see it around us. This is much heavier than we, it was uh, probably three hours ago when we first started getting out here and getting reports that this area was taken on water. Now a little bit earlier, you couldn't pass through the underpass here at Malconi Drive because workers with the uh, pumping station number seven, which is right next door, say that a lot of the debris from the tropical storm that pushed through Friday and Saturday and debris mixed in with this storm was really clogging the drain. So they got out here with shovels to try and make sure that the pumps were able to suction out the water from under it. A lot of cars went through it. Unfortunately, just one uh, stalled out, but that car has since been removed. You can see now, well, the roads have been blocked since then, so no cars have been coming through. Thankfully, the water has gone down on that end because right now we are getting this heavy rain that you were just talking about. So right now, the underpass is much better. It is passable in comparison to how it was a couple of hours ago, but crews, of course, just watching it. Chris? Well, Mike, thank you. You've actually had Mike McDaniel out since that first wave of heavy rain. And as he mentioned, the water did drain. So pumps are working. If, if that had not drained, the pumps and drainage would not be doing anything. But as Mike said, he's been out there since that first batch already moved through. That's what I was talking about earlier that is already almost now east of Picayune. When that pushed through the city, we did see, as Mike mentioned, the high water under the Marconi underpass. Well, that subsided and he said it's passable at the moment. Well, he also confirmed what we've been talking about. What is moving over him right now is more intense than even that was. So though it may be passable at the moment, I wouldn't chance it because with this heavy rain moving through, it will be underwater and submerged very shortly. I'm actually kind of surprised it hasn't already, but let's see what happens over the next few minutes as very intense rain is now almost over the entire heart of the city. Looking at trying to get in on some improving conditions, it does appear as though it's gotten to be more of a moderate to light rain over St. Charles Parish. Still intense and heavy over all of northern Jefferson Parish. We still have the heavy rainfall well on the West Bank. So this is going to be another several minutes, uh, 10 to 20, before all of this continues to move up toward the north. As I mentioned, I'm always looking for that bright side. It doesn't look as though as I widen out radar that there is anything else down to the south and west. And we kind of confirm that on satellite that it doesn't look like there's at least anything intense. Now there are some showers still forming, but those intense storms where you saw those bright colors on satellite indicating those more uh, uh, not severe, but very uh, um, intensive rain event type uh, storms moving in. It doesn't look like that really is going to be the case. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be done with the rainfall, but certainly slackening off quite a bit, and that will allow for drainage to kind of take hold. And as I mentioned, Mike showing the Marconi underpass having been inundated and then clear now and will likely start rising is showing us that the drains and the pumps are working. They are doing what they're supposed to. But these type of an event, this type of event, I should say, that's going to inundate even the world's best pumping system. Them. The 10 to uh, four to five inch instantaneous rainfall rates are going to inundate the system. Now, thankfully, areas like the Marconi underpass showing signs of improvement also would lead you to believe that a lot of our roads at least started to clear a bit kind of between these two rounds of very heavy rainfall. I've been talking about two events that have already moved through. The first one has already moved now almost out of Hancock County. So this is the first batch and actually it's kind of intensified as it has moved into southern Mississippi. You don't see quite as much light. Actually, it does look like more of the lightning is kind of uh, get, has gotten going there, but you see the colorization where it's indicating the more intense downpours that are now moving into northern Hancock will eventually move into Harrison and then continue and will continue up toward uh, uh, more north of Hancock County shortly. At least we've also gotten a break from the heavy rainfall in Slidell, where at the moment we still have a flash flood warning. Now the big question will be if these rainfall rates continue from what is over the city right now and continues towards Slidell, will we see a considerable flash flood warning issued for Slidell? I would venture to say yes, only because even if the rainfall rates do come down a bit, you're talking about an area that saw near a foot of rain on Saturday morning. 
And so that ground is completely saturated. It has absolutely nowhere to go in any kind of heavy rainfall after they've just gone through one round. Anything else is going to lead to more widespread flooding. So unfortunately for the folks in Slidell, after what we went through there on late Friday and Saturday morning, you've got another batch of heavy rainfall. Now, this is not a long duration event thankfully, but you have seen what the storms are doing. They have been training over the same locations and that goes from kind of the Thibodeau Homa areas where they get started and then they springboard from the Bayou parishes over the city and the river parishes continue over Lake Pontchartrain into Slidell. So southeastern St. Tammany that was inundated from Claudette and then continuing up more into northern Hancock and Harrison County. So north of the shoreline along the Mississippi coast. So that's kind of been the trajectory for the last several hours of this very heavy rainfall. Gretna has reported uh, 2.58 inches. Um, let's see. Weather Service folks saying, yeah, uh, the, the flash flood warning in Slidell staying in effect, obviously, for the incoming rain to the southwest, but um, curious if they're going to put a uh, a considerable tag on that. Actually, a correction from from Gretna. The rainfall rate has been about four and a half to five inches per hour. So that's kind of what we've been talking about. That's some of the highest, more widespread rainfall rates that we have seen from these storms over the metro area. A lot of that is at least starting to clear St. Charles Parish, so some good news there, but it is still very intense across much of Je uh, Jefferson as well as Orleans. And if these hold together at those more considerable rainfall rates, we may see that considerable tag placed on Slidell. So for folks on the North Shore within this polygon area, so parts of Man Mandeville, Lacombe, Slidell out toward Purlington. You may hear your cell phones uh, kind of go off shortly if they do place a considerable tag. That will alert what's called the WIA system, and that will alert your cell phone if you fall within these areas. Usually geographically, it's only if you're in that area, but I know I've heard some people don't get it, even if you're within that area, and then sometimes you get it and you're not within that area. But to give you an idea of who will likely hear their phones go off if they trigger that considerable tag, it would be all of this. Let me zoom in here on radar. It will be all of this in the, uh, the polygon, the kind of uh, outlined area in southeastern St. Tammany Parish. So certainly Lacombe, parts of Mandeville, and into Slidell up toward the Mississippi-Louisiana line south of Picayune. So it would likely be this same area unless they decide to expand it. The Weather Service, it will be in this area that we could hear those cell phones go off shortly as another batch of even heavier rain is moving into the Slidell area right now. Rainfall rates that we have been getting actual reports of uh, from folks on the ground and a lot of these are emergency management officials we're getting um, over four and a half inches per hour in parts of Jefferson that's around the Gretna area we've gotten reports of um, uh, two to two and a half uh, near uh, parts of the city uh, that's from Colin Arnold, actually, with the city of New Orleans. Uh, rainfall rate at one point about 20 minutes ago of uh, 3.6 inches per hour at the Carrollton water plant. So it seems as though some of the highest amounts have not been as widespread from 6 to 7 inches per hour. It's generally been uh, 4 to 5, maybe in a little bit lower than that. We're getting some thunder here at our station. So let's take a look at some of the rainfall estimates, the totals that we have seen uh, over the area so far uh, this e uh, this afternoon. Now this is kind of a rough estimate and I'm going to widen out just to show you the path that these heavy storms have been taking. So far in the areas of light green, it's one to three and that's been fairly widespread. Again, on a normal summer day, had we been dry all week, wouldn't have been that much of an issue. But because we were already fairly saturated, now really we had most of our rainfall from Claudette from the city obviously more so into Slidell and the Mississippi coast. Thibodeau and Homa didn't really see nearly anything from Claudette, so they can kind of withstand that one to three, even areas now of three to six inches. But notice it is taking that path of 
the Hibido, uh, the Thibodeau Homa, New Orleans, out towards Slidell and into Mississippi. This is that training of rain that just keeps falling over the same locations. And if we kind of do a query of some of these estimates of what we have seen, uh, let's say right around the Destrehan area, over five inches of rainfall. Parts of the city looks like out toward Gentilly near the lakefront, you know, three and a half to four. We're just starting to get the higher rainfall rate, or higher rainfall totals are in the Slidell area right now. So those numbers or those estimates uh, will be coming in shortly as this new batch of rain starts moving overhead. So I'm going to erase these and we're going to go back to our reflectivity and show you again where this heavy rainfall is at the moment. And I also want to show what the rainfall rates are doing with those heavy storms that are moving over the city. So again, you see the rainfall rates, but before I put the numbers on there, they are beginning to weaken from St. Charles Parish toward Kenner. Still fairly heavy, kind of that heavy to extreme range from Jefferson through Orleans. Now notice that is all moving into the southern and eastern part of Lake Pontchartrain. That will continue moving up towards Slidell, those heavy rainfall rates. And what are some of those rainfall rates? Let's zoom in. Again, this is radar estimates. This uh, sometimes can be verified, but 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 often it, it we need kind of that ground support. See some of the rainfall rates, at least based on the estimates, aren't showing up nearly as high as what we're getting reports of. As uh, even I query some of the more extreme numbers, uh, you're getting 2.73. That's a good sign. That that hopefully. Though these may not be completely accurate, uh, that the intensity of the rain may be waning a bit. Still very heavy. Uh, don't want to uh, don't want to uh, let your guard down. This is still very very heavy rainfall, but perhaps not quite as heavy as it was. So let's see. This is running at about one and a half to maybe three inches uh, per hour. If I go backwards here, just a half hour, and we can go to the rainfall rates from when notice. If I clear this out, what the rainfall rates were around Kenner and uh, south of Destrehan. Uh, now it's showing about the same. So, but, but you see the the colorization here is far more intense uh, than it was at the moment. So, just looking at not even the numbers, but the the contour colors of those rainfall estimates, you can clearly see they have weakened quite a bit as they are now moving over the city and moving toward uh, Slidell. So again, not to say that this isn't some very intense rain. It does look like it's not as intense as it was once this really started to get going and kind of fired up over this uh, over Kenner and Destrehan uh, a little while ago. So what had really blossomed into some extreme rainfall rates, you had a lot of lighting and very, very intense rain that started from Kenner to Destrehan, Hanville. As they pushed over the city, those rainfall rates did begin to drop a bit as they started pushing over the city. Still very intense, still widespread reports of street flooding. All of those underpasses don't even chance them. And as I said, if you're watching us at work or a lot of summer camps, stay where you are. Just wait, wait for this next batch to move on. You might have to wait another hour or more to allow for drainage to catch up. As Mike McDaniel was showing us out at the Marconi underpass, it had cleared from what had been high water. So the pumps and drainage are working. That water had dropped and it was actually passable for a period. Now I'm not sure what it looks like at the moment as these heavy bands are or heavy uh, rounds of ra uh, rain are moving through, but it at least shows us that the pumps and all are working as this very intense rain continues to push across the metro area. Starting to get a little bit heavier around the Chalmette uh, uh, and parts of uh, Western St. Bernard Parish where we had been a drier in the sense of the more intense rain. So it is starting to push more into St. Bernard. May not make it as far east as Poydras and it even looks like Bell Chase is not really getting in on the real intense rain as again this whole cluster is moving up towards the north and east. But we can also look at actual rainfall totals, not just the estimates of what we have seen um, uh, so far this afternoon. And let's see if uh, any of our gauges are able to kind of keep up with the rainfall totals that we have seen uh, so far. OK, uh, we're actually going to kind of officially begin our newscast and jump back over to what uh, what we're looking at at the moment over the city of New Orleans. Live from WWL-TV, this is the Eyewitness News at 5. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm Karen Swenson along with Katie Moore. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of the Eyewitness News at 5. Really big story, the rain. Absolutely. It is raining heavily across the metro area with some areas getting some significant street flooding. We're just getting those reports into the newsroom at this hour. But Chris, of course, has been keeping us up to date on the forecast and the radar and looking at that pretty significant rainfall that's happening right now. So we want to go back over to him uh, to get the latest. Chris. Yeah, you know, some of the it's funny. I was just looking at glancing at some of the uh, official totals and, and I kind of questioned some of these as to whether or not they're accurate as a lot of our totals are not showing what you would think. But uh, again, uh, the the rain, the stations are not necessarily within some of the heaviest because we're only reporting seven tenths of an inch at Kenner. And maybe that is the case at the airport, but there have certainly been some bands that looks what appears to be just to the west of Kenner that were far higher than that. Now downtown, this is at the heliport right near to the Superdome 1.62 whereas lakefront has been at 2.87 now only reporting about a hundredth of an inch of rain at Slidell that is again at the airport so perhaps more northern Slidell hasn't been nearly as heavy as just south of that and that is possible but I kind of question some of these official numbers because when we look at the rainfall estimates it has been far far higher than that so again want to show you what we are looking at over the city of New Orleans right now and some very intense rainfall rates have been in excess of four to six inches and a lot of folks about a half hour ago were probably um, startled when their cell phones went off. A flash flood warning had been issued earlier before four o'clock for the storms as the next round of heavy rain was getting ready to move through. What the Weather Service then does is places a considerable tag on that warning. Basically in their computer system, they place considerable threat where it is more of a flood emergency. So we've gone beyond it just being more of a nuisance flooding event and really just focus on roadways. But now it becomes dangerous if you do uh, try and do any driving. As we had reports from the city, uh, and again, we don't have the specifics as to where that occurred, but we had some reports of um, let me find it here. Six to 12 inches of flowing water over roadways. A foot of water moving is going to move your car. That is not something you ever want to drive in. That doesn't typically happen here, but if it is moving water, that is going to move your car. It does not take much. The power of water is extreme and it does not take much to move water. And especially for folks trying to walk through something like that, you're a goner. You don't try and do that. That is why until this is gone and notice it is clearing out from west to east. It is clearing out. It is still very intense rainfall at the moment and it's going to take several hours for all of those roadways or at least I should say most of those roadways to finally drain and clear. We had reports about uh, what 10 15 minutes ago from Mike McDaniel. He was out at the Marconi underpass and earlier he had been out there since that first batch of rain had moved on through. He said the water had risen and then had dropped back down, which tells you that the pumps and drains are working. Well, now this new heavy batch, which is even more intense than that first round, is starting to push through at the moment. So not sure if that underpass is back underwater or not, but uh, I would venture to say if the first round put it underwater, uh, this second round certainly will be. I also want to point out slide L because this is where we had all of that flooding on Saturday morning. Now, thankfully, it didn't look like it was as widespread over slide L, at least in terms of the intense rain from this first round that moved on through and this one started to move almost out of our viewing area now and actually this batch act, uh, more or less intensified as it moved away from Slidell and Hancock County. So it's intensifying as it moves away. You see the intensity of the rainfall as well as the amount of lightning that is developing from that. But though they're getting a break from the rainfall in Slidell at the moment, we do have another round of that heavy rain with the rainfall rates have been, let's say widespread four to five inches. That is all moving now toward the shoreline. So Lacombe, you're getting ready to get on it right along the shoreline in Slidell. And this is all pushing in your direction over the same areas which are completely saturated from the heavy rainfall associated with Claudette on Friday night and early on Saturday morning. So this is been following kind of a trajectory from around the home of Thibodeau area. We're really offshore and then from home of Thibodeau across the metro area up through Slidell and again over southeastern St. Tammany Parish, really the same part of the parish that got inundated with that heavy rainfall from Claudette and just several hours of very heavy rainfall. The duration of this rain is not nearly as long. So 
I'm always trying to find that silver lining, and the duration of this will not be nearly as long as it was on Saturday morning. So that's one positive. The other positive is there doesn't appear as though that there is anything more southwest of this next batch that is moving over the city and will continue over Slidell. Okay, we have uh, Tan who is in Kenner. Again, we had some very heavy rain. Does look like it may be starting to abate a bit, but let's see uh, what he has to say. Tan? Well, Chris, you were just mentioning a little while ago about the rain in Kenner. Just take a look behind me here. We are in Rivertown. This is Williams Boulevard near 4th Street. And if people don't know where we are, Jenduces is near the corner here. And all the rain, all the water seems to be pooling, ponding in this area right here. If you go riverbound, you're going to go right into Jefferson Highway. Now, as we go to lakebound on Williams Boulevard, there's sort of a intersection right now where the police have cut off the area near the train tracks going into Rivertown. We don't quite know what is going on up there, but I think that it's more for traffic control. But this area got a very big burst of rain, and it lasted about 45 minutes, and I think everybody was was kind of shocked and kind of surprised when they got that alert on their phones. That's when the rain started here for sure. And it lasted for about 45 minutes. It's starting to subside right now. But as you can kind of take a look at the traffic coming from Lakebound, from the lake area on Williams Boulevard, heading to the riverside of this area in Rivertown, uh, you can see how this is kind of treacherous at this point because of the water that's ponding in this area. And it, and it seems to be concentrated in this part near 4th Street and Williams Boulevard for some reason. We're not quite sure why, uh, but there is a substantial amount of water on the road right now, and it's actually gone down in the past 10 minutes or so. But you're still seeing the after effects of that burst of rain that hit us about 45 minutes ago. And this is sort of the, the scene that we've been looking at for a while now. Uh, people are taking their, as they give us uh, some shout outs here, as, as we're also broadcasting live, uh, people are taking their time because obviously this is the situation where we always tell you to slow down because of the wake that's being caused by the water that's now ponding in this area. Uh, so far, we haven't heard of many accidents here. Uh, luckily, there is not too much uh, open right now on this particular day. Most of the businesses uh, in Rivertown are usually closed on Tuesdays for some reason. Uh, but we are seeing a good amount of traffic coming in from Jefferson Highway coming onto Williams Boulevard in Rivertown. Now, we originally came here to talk about a story about development in Rivertown, uh, but that story quickly changed because of the weather here. And that's certainly the situation for many people. I think that as we were kind of going through the day, uh, people were kind of going through their normal routines and then this rain hit and we got that alert on our telephones. And now you're seeing the after effects. Now, this is sort of the area and the time uh, for the commute home. And now we're starting to see the traffic coming through this area. But but people are taking their time. They're not speeding through this area, as you can see, uh, but they are turning around because the intersection going towards the train tracks here in Rivertown uh, is blocked off by Kenner police. Uh, we don't believe there's an accident or any type of situation like that. It's more for traffic control. Uh, but luckily, again, you see people avoiding the water here. It's ponding. It doesn't seem to be going down in this particular area at the intersection of Williams and 4th Street. We don't know why. Uh, but further, closer to the tracks and certainly further towards Jefferson Highway, it is starting to recede at this point. Uh, but you can kind of see there is sort of a current here moving uh, in this water, strangely enough, uh, because of all the movement with the cars. But we are starting to see cars turn around and avoid this area, which is always what we're advising people to do. And certainly city and emergency leaders always tell you that when you see water to avoid it and you see these cars turning around at this point. That is the latest here in Rivertown in Kenner at this point. We'll toss it back to you guys in the studio. You know, Tan, Rivertown obviously earning its name, unfortunately, but it's difficult to tell from our vantage point. Can you tell if any of that water is getting into those businesses? It looks dangerously close. No, at this point too, Katie, it, it actually has receded. Uh, at probably about 20 minutes ago, it was kind of flirting with the area uh, coming towards Jenduces, but there are areas, uh, as you can see on this side here, um, it doesn't look like the water is going to get into that because it's starting to recede. But again, this is why we always urge people to slow down. As you get more traffic going through this area on Williams, it tends to push and will push that water up towards those properties. But uh, it seems that the water has slacked off in terms of that area that's pounding and pooling uh, at the base of Williams here. Uh, but luckily, we're starting to get 
uh, less rain here as well, which is helping significantly because for a long clip there, for about 45 minutes, it came down at a very quick rate and it was coming down very heavy and you see the after effects now. Uh, but certainly, I mean, we haven't been able to get closer to that point near the train tracks. We're not sure uh, how deep the water is there, but you can probably see this large truck coming down here right now. It is pushing a good amount of water and that's something that we've always talked about and urged people not to do is to kind of push that water bin. If you do have to travel, uh, just take your time and be cognizant and be very aware of what you're causing for these businesses here. But um, these areas here, these businesses are not open. Um, that could be a good and bad thing, uh, but at this point we don't see any of the water that's on Williams Boulevard getting into the businesses along Williams Boulevard. Katie. tonight and uh, as you just mentioned if people could just slow down out there there is nothing worse than having a house or a business escape flooding from rainfall and then have a wake caused by cars end up pushing water into your house or business oh it's infuriating now and then we've talked about the, the, the flooding really being across the region this is in lakeview uh it was taken earlier on pentalba street so that'd be presumably around delgado or so um but yeah, there's the catch basin. Hopefully you were had a chance to clear yours out um, ahead of the, you know what became Claudette. Um, if now it's a little too late, but luckily we are being told that the, the pumps appear to be working. Uh, you know, we talked to Mike McDaniel earlier, who was at the Marconi underpass earlier, right. completely flooded. When we last spoke with him, it, it was it was not people. It was passable. That's great. That's great news that the pumps are out there working because the rain has been coming down hard and heavy, and it started around four o'clock this afternoon in a lot of areas. We all started to get those alerts on our phone, right. talking about the possibility of flash flooding in a lot of areas, especially in Orleans Parish. So the man of the hour. Meteorologist Chris Franklin is standing by uh, to tell us more about how the weather is moving right now. And Chris, is it lightening up at all? It, it is in some spots. You know, we were talking more about the Marconi underpass and we uh, spoke with Mike probably now about a half hour ago and it, it was passable. Well, I just received a text from Chef Kevin and he's there and it's impassable. And they're saying that there are warning lights that did not light up. They're not sure why. So uh, Marconi underpass is impassable once again. Now, it had been inundated by that first batch that had moved on through. We have this new second batch that's moving through at the moment. But notice, southwest of there, we have some showers, but it's not nearly the intense rain that we have already seen. And I'm going to jump a couple of graphics here and show you on our colorized infrared satellite what we're doing here is we colorize the cloud tops and kind of reverse thinking the bright reds to blacks are your colder cloud tops normally that's more of a hot color but those are colder we colorize it that way because these are the more intense storms those storms that are able to build taller and taller into the atmosphere they're able to hold a lot more rainfall well we are getting a break and actually I shouldn't even call it just a break, kind of an end to that heavy rainfall. We had the one batch that moved over Mississippi or moving into Mississippi, which is weakening. Still have that bright cloud top that is sitting over the metro area. And I kind of widened out the satellite to show you this uh, complex of storms that had just been absolutely incredible to see on satellite and it is falling apart. So some good news there. This is actually not a tropical system. This is just an upper trough, which is helping to ignite within a very moist tropical atmosphere atmosphere, very heavy rainfall and the rain that has been developing are efficient rain producers. So when we colorize satellite, you can see that between New Orleans, Homa toward the coast, there isn't those bright, intense cloud tops, certainly some rainfall, no question about it. There is still going to be some rain developing, but it's not those heavy rain rates of four to five or even six inches per hour. It is not that. So it looks like as this last batch moves on through and continues in the direction of Slidell, we should see an end to the heavy rainfall. Not an end to the rain, but at least the heavy rain that has led to the widespread flooding across the area. And as I zoom in here on the city, notice time confirmed out in Rivertown in Kenner. So he's in South Kenner. It is coming to an end and we have seen quite a break in now Metairie. So parts of Jefferson Parish are continuing to dry out. Still fairly intense from the city toward New Orleans East. It's fairly intense north of Chalmette now. Now these are in areas around Michou up towards say the uh, uh, Venetian Isles, not actually within the warned area, but certainly some very heavy rainfall that could uh, lead to a quick two to 
three, maybe even four inches of rainfall. But thankfully, rainfall rates have diminished. So the storms are weakening and they are moving. So we are beginning to dry out over Metairie. Still fairly moderate to heavy rainfall at times over the city. This is a live pick. This is downtown. Now, uh, look, this is the World War II Museum, so around Higgins and Camp. And it looks like the roads are passable. And, and you can see the rainfall. I would call that kind of a moderate to heavy rain at the moment. So um, from our vantage point on the roadways, there's the Higgins Hotel. Uh, you know, roads there are passable. I'm not saying that all roads within the uh, metro area are impassable, uh, but you may have a dry road that uh, runs into a flooded intersection and causes some major backups. And of course, this is all occurring at the evening drive. I guess these folks just went ahead, decided to leave work because, you know, if you are watching us now at work and you're on the uh, WWL app and trying to think of whether or not I should leave, just hang tight for a little while longer. Give this heavy rain some time to move out and give the pumps and just what little natural drainage we have time to kind of catch up. We are starting to dry out, so at least improving from west to east. But as you just saw a ton in Rivertown on Williams, it's going to take a little bit of time for all of that high water to completely recede. And nothing, as Karen and Katie said, nothing infuriates me more than seeing a large vehicle think they can just drive right over it, not thinking of the wake that you're creating to all the homes and businesses on either side of the street. One of my favorite restaurants was Genduces. They look like they're dry now. So I want to see a truck driving past them and putting water into their front door. I think they're actually built up, as are a lot of the businesses in Rivertown, thankfully. But that heavier rain, the intensity is not as bad as it is still pushing through the city. We will see this begin to recede or, or, or diminish, I should, I should say, uh, coming up shortly. As far as that heavy rain moving towards Slidell, folks there are just now or, or beginning to get into some of the more heavy rain. Now, this isn't as bad as it was over the city of New Orleans. The rainfall rates not as high. These storms are not nearly as intense. One thing you really don't see within these storms moving towards Slidell is a whole lot of lightning, so they're not intensifying at the moment. You're also looking at the reflectivity, the color colorization of the rain and yes, intense, but they have not started to or exploded in strength. So that is a good sign that the rain that is moving towards Slidell, albeit heavy, not as bad as it was over the city of New Orleans. And I want to update just real quick as I'm hearing um, some chimes come in from the National Weather Service office. Uh, obviously, they're reporting a lot of streets and, and roadways flooded. Uh, we've had some unconfirmed reports out in Bridge City on the West Bank of uh, around Cone Street between Dante and Dublin of at least two inches of water covering the street. And again, that is an unconfirmed uh, kind of preliminary report into the National Weather Service office. Uh, of around in the Bridge City area of around two inches uh, covering some streets. They certainly on the west bank of Jefferson. That's kind of where that initial explosion of these heavy storms developed. So wouldn't surprise me to see about two inches of rain on some of those roadways. Thankfully, it has started to subside a bit as it now approaches an area that again had seen about eight to 12 inches of rain over the course of late Friday and Saturday morning from Claudette. So ground already saturated and unfortunately you find yourself kind of within that trajectory of the training rain beginning to come to an end around the city and thankfully there is nothing else at least in terms of those heavy downpours to the southwest of us that would mean this is going to be an ongoing uh, concern into the late night hours. Well, that is the silver lining. All right. Thanks very much, Chris. Yeah. And one of the areas that we've talked about already is that underpass near Marconi, and that's an area that typically floods. There are some warning lights that are there, um, and Mike McDaniel's been standing by out in that area for us to tell us whether or not that area is passable or not. Chef Kevin said earlier in a text to Chris that it was not, but it looks like it's getting a little bit better out there, Mike. Well, we, I tell you what, we can't hear him, but we can certainly <laughs> see the cars moving behind him. So I think what's happening is just, right, it, it, the water it starts to increase, then the pumps are clearly working. Yes. It's passable now. So on and off, on and off, It's it, just be careful if you're in that area and you certainly don't want to venture into any um, 
any water if you see it starting to accumulate. Absolutely. You know, we were talking a little while ago about the fact that we were talking for a week leading up to what became Claudette. And then you have something like this that just comes out of nowhere and happens on a Monday afternoon. And that is New Orleans weather, right? right. It is. It absolutely <laughs> is. And Mike McDaniel is now used to that. So we're going to try to touch base with him again. Hey, Mike. You know, technical difficulties in the rain. It's a, a fl very fluid situation out here, especially when it comes to a lot of water. We had some lightning, a lot of lightning a little bit earlier, and so that's why you didn't see us for a while. But thankfully, we are in, at the, I guess at what Chris was saying, it is pushed out of here, so we are in that right now. A much different scene than what it was just, a, you know, 20 minutes ago. This street, Marconi Drive, the underpass is now open. You can see it's completely passable. The roads have reopened. There's been a steady stream of cars coming through through here for the last, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Now, of course, this was not the case just when that first heavy band of rain pushed through because the underpass down here really did start to flood. And really what saved it was two sewerage and water board employees. They ran down from the hill with some shovels in hand and they cleaned the drains. As the water started rising, a lot of cars just went through it, but others decided to take a safer route by turning around. While a few cars, of course, did get stuck in the water at one time, thankfully there was just one SUV out of everything that stalled out. The driver, she was okay. She told me she didn't realize the water was that high and thought that she could make it, but to her credit, a lot of other cars in front of her did make it. Now an employee at pumping station number seven, which is right next to this underpass was on his way to work when he saw what was happening. So he said he just parked, he got out, he ran up to the station, he grabbed another employee, they grabbed shovels, and then they started coming down here to clear debris that had built up on top of the drains, which is at the bottom of this underpass. Take a listen to what he said. We caught up with him a little bit earlier. I can't actually see in the water because it's kind of murky, so I have to just keep shoveling until I clear everything out. Do you think some of that debris could have been from the storm from the weekend too that kind of all yeah. Yeah. Pounded on each other. Yeah, there's old debris, new debris. I tell you, those workers just don't get enough credit for what they do out here. That worker, Scott Green, says the pumps were working at the time when that first round of heavy rain pushed through, but it was that debris that was causing the suction to not work from the pumps. They have since cleared it, and thankfully there was a break between those two heavy rain bands because the water was able to go down and the heavy rain was not here yet, so it didn't compound the already rising water that was there. So as you see behind me, trucks and utility trucks going through. No big deal right now. It seems the heavy rain is now out of here, so hopefully it stays this way. No problems to report out this way. Only one stalled vehicle since we've been here. A lot of cars still going through it. One truck actually went next to that stalled SUV, pushing a lot of water into her SUV, which was very unfortunate for folks to you know be stalled out and then get flooded because of a weight from a truck that decided just to plow right by you. But thankfully everyone's okay out here. Light rain, much better than it was just a little while ago, ladies. Like Your improvement, improvement, improvement. Thank you very much. And we also want to say that those workers really are the unsung heroes. So thank you to all of them. They certainly are. I mean, without them, we would be in a much uh, worse situation today Indeed. for sure. This is a look. Check it out on your screen right now. This is downtown New Orleans in the CBD. It's a live picture as we're driving through to show you what the street conditions are like and what the road conditions are like as this heavy rain is pushed through the city of New Orleans. You can see that there is water on the road. Obviously, it's raining. The windshield wipers are on as photojournalist Derek Waldrop drives through. Um, but, you know, this was a much different scene probably just 30 minutes ago as that really heavy rain just right. dumped over the West Bank and made its way through New Orleans. And as Chris mentioned, just if you can just wait a beat, just wait a few minutes before you head home because it may be okay here, but, I, you know, we don't know what your destination is. And we just heard them talk about some of the flooding on the, on the West Bank. Um, so uh, depending on where you live, there might be some issues. So if you just give us a little bit of chance, give Mother Nature a little bit of a break to, to um, to catch up and let those drains work. They are working. And the good news, like Chris said, is there's not another system right behind it. You know, we already had a one two punch today, but this this should be it, hopefully. Yeah, for a while. let's hope. <laughs> let's hope, fingers crossed, right? Another thing that we're not seeing, though, is water coming out of the drains the opposite way, which can happen if the pumps are overloaded. So that's a really good sign because we're not seeing that as Derek's driving around. 
And, you know, you've been covering this with the Down the Drain team for years now. So mm -hmm. this is encouraging and the news that we're going to get some new perturbance, et cetera. Right. Absolutely. I mean, once that new source of power comes to the city of New Orleans, it should be a much different situation in terms of the reliability of those pumps and the drainage system as a whole. So that'll be something that's welcome for, I'm sure, everyone who lives in Orleans Parish and just, for, you know, for people paying those flood rates and all of those things, I would think that that would have an impact on it. That well. will be huge. Now, uh, again, it is 524, so we're at the height of rush hour, and that's a look at the roads on the interstate right now. I-10 and Jeff Davis, it is slow moving out of the city, um, as you would expect, but um, but it is moving. And while there's probably some ponding, we all know there's areas that pond on the interstate. Uh, traditionally, I would imagine that there are some there. So you want to take it slowly, um, but at least the traffic is moving. It's not at a total standstill there. Doesn't yeah, that would be, be terrible. Pretty close, but <laughs> it's close. <laughs> <laughs> so expect a, expect some delays. Yeah. Um, it, yes, it has been rough. And so for everyone who has gotten home safely, that's great news tonight if you were able to make it before the worst of it hit. But um, if you are planning on heading out on the interstate, it looks like you're going to have a rough road for a little while. Right. Oh, we are joined now by Colin Arnold, Director of Homeland Security for New Orleans. Thank you so much for joining us. And, and what are you hearing from your, your folks out in the field? Oh. Thanks for having me on uh, really quickly here. Uh, definitely uh, an opportunity here, if possible, to stay in for another 30 minutes just to make sure. Uh, looks like this is passing, but at one point, you know, very recently within the last 20 to 30 minutes, we were looking at four to five inches of rain coming down per hour, which is a, you know, that's a tremendous rainfall rate. That's what triggered the considerable flash flood warning, which, you know, triggers that phone alert. It's, it's a life safety issue, and we just want people to know driving right now, if you're driving, be extremely careful. Uh, if you have a chance to wait a few minutes on this commute home tonight, do that. And, uh, you know, we've lifted parking restrictions. We did that before the first round earlier this afternoon when we saw and heard from the Weather Service about what was coming our way. And so people can use that. We'll reevaluate that through the evening. And, you know, seeing um, a handful of flooding reports on streetwise.nola.gov, which is where you can go to look for flooding and also traffic accidents, seen a little uptick in those this afternoon, probably because of the rain as well. And so, you know, people just need to be very careful, and we wanted to get the word out that we're, we're monitoring this. Uh, it does appear to be coming down, but certainly uh, use caution, uh, particularly while this is the commute. These are the hours of our evening commute. Colin, we saw earlier that under the Marconi uh, um, underpass that there were a couple of cars that were stuck. Do you know if the fire department and the police department have responded to any rescues or anything because of this flooding? Uh, they have responded to those. I don't know if I would call them rescues at this point. Uh, I would say that there are certainly uh, vehicles stranded in underpasses, which is why when those flood warning lights come on at those underpasses, which we have a few of them on right now, um, the Canal Underpass, Gentilian 610, and Downman, uh, make sure that you follow those lights. Please to consider that road closed. You do not know how deep that water is, but I can tell you that it's deep enough to stall your vehicle and put you in a situation that is is dangerous. What are you hearing, Colin, from the Sewage and Water Board? We talked to them earlier this afternoon before the first round. Uh, no known issues. Uh, I would point out that you know, when anytime you get four to five inches of rain per hour for for an extended period of time, we're looking at about four inches of rain uptown, uh, actually on the ground. You know those. That takes time under the best circumstances in order to drain. And so we had a little bit of break between uh, the two bands that came through, but this second band will put water in the underpasses particularly and in low-lying areas and that, you know, people need to be cognizant of that and it will clear, but uh, it, it will take some time and the best course of action is to not drive through it. Do you, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, are you expecting that the worst is over? Yes, uh, it, it is coming down. In fact, uptown now, it looks like it has stopped raining. Um, but again, there will be some flooding, some street flooding issues. We have lifted parking restrictions. We did that before the first round when we heard from the Weather Service. We have great communication with them, and they kind of let us know what was coming our way. Um, people can park on neutral grounds. We just ask them to use caution, and we'll evaluate that through the evening. There may be periods of rain, light to moderate rain, through the evening tonight, and then tomorrow we may be facing some more 
uh, rain, you know, potential thunderstorms, but uh, we'll be evaluating and, and monitoring that. All right, Colin Arnold, uh, Director of Homeland Security for the City of New Orleans, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate all the hard work and your time. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Katie. All right. All right, thank you very much. And hopefully all of the preps that we took in anticipation of what became Claudette put us in a better vantage point for this. Absolutely. I mean, you know, as he mentioned, this is a tremendous amount of rainfall in a short period of time. This is what we get concerned about when we do talk about those tropical bands that move through in the event of a tropical storm or a hurricane is the idea that we could get somewhere between two and five inches of rain in just an hour's time. And that's what he's saying that we saw today in Uptown and other places around the metropolitan area. And, you know, I know that we're seeing on social media some things pop up where we're getting some pictures of what's been going on. So hopefully, you yes. know, we'll get to share those with our viewers. In just a little bit. We're going to continue to cover this story. We're going to have a lot more for you coming up at six o'clock and we'll get back and talk to Chris as well at that point. But uh, so stay with Channel 4 as we continue to cover this uh, this system that came through, no name, that caused more of a more of a problem than Claudette. Absolutely, have a great. From personal injury accidents to big pharma fallout. I'm attorney Frank D'Amico Jr. If you or a loved one has been injured in a motor vehicle crash, call my office today. Reach for the strong arm, Frank D'Amico Jr. Tonight, deadly weather. The 30 million Americans in the...